that the abdomen is separated from the thorax by a diaphragm. This is the thoraco-abdominal diaphragm. The diaphragm or the thoraco-abdominal diaphragm has two domes. This is the right dome of the diaphragm and the left dome of the diaphragm. You will notice that the right dome of the diaphragm is a little bit higher than the left dome of the diaphragm. In the center, there is a central tendon and the central tendon is related to the heart. The right dome of the diaphragm is higher because inferiorly it is related to the bulky liver. You can see the liver, the wedge shape of the liver, and on the visceral surface of the liver, the gallbladder. This is the region of the fundus of the gallbladder. The fundus of the gallbladder is located almost at the same level where the pylorus of the stomach is located, at the transpyloric plane. Of the stomach, the part that is shown here is the fundus. It is located below the left dome of the diaphragm. This is the fundus of the stomach. In a plain x-ray, in the erect position, you will expect to find air in the fundus of the stomach. Below is the body of the stomach. And then the body of the stomach will continue into the pyloric region and the pyloric sphincter leading to the first part of the duodenum. Here is the pancreas. Of course, you will not be able to see all the parts of the pancreas in this section, but this is the region of the head of the pancreas and the body of the pancreas. The tail of the pancreas continues toward the hilum of the spleen. Not all of the spleen is shown in this section, but only this part of the spleen is shown. We will see the spleen in the next sections. Also, you will notice that there are parts of the small intestine, jejunum and the ileum. You will identify these parts because of the presence of these mucosal folds, the plechi circularis or the valvuli coniventis. You can see many of these folds here. Less folds below. The folds are more numerous in the jejunum and they are less numerous in the ileum. The ileal folds extend into the pelvis and you can see here that the ileal folds are related to the upper surface of the urinary bladder. This is the urinary bladder in section and you notice that the urinary bladder is related to the pubic bones. These are the pubic bones and in the middle is the pubic symphysis. Below the symphysis pubis, in the body of the penis, you will see the three cylinders that form the body of the penis. The two dorsal cylinders are the corpora cavernosa and the ventral cylinder is the corpus spongiosum. These are cylinders of erectile tissue. You will notice that the corpora cavernosa are surrounded by a thick membrane or a thick layer of fibrous tissue which is whitish in color here. And this is called the tunica albuginea. The corpus spongiosum, which is located ventrally, is traversed by the penile urethra. Returning back to the abdominal wall, so apart from the diaphragm here, the thoraco-abdominal diaphragm, in the, the anterolateral abdominal wall is formed of three layers of muscles. The deepest layer is the transverse abdominis muscle. The intermediate layers is the internal oblique and the outer layer is the external oblique muscle. You can discriminate these three layers separately. Going down into the pelvis, this is part of the, the part of the pelvis that is called the greater pelvis. 
or the false pelvis. It is part of the abdominal cavity. You can see the muscles here in the, in this, in the pelvic wall. This is the iliacus muscle arising from the iliac fossa. And this is the psoas muscle, the psoas muscle attached to the vertebral column. Both these muscles, they unite together in a common tendon. You can see it on the other side because the section is a little bit deeper on the, on the other side. You will notice that these two muscles, they combine together the iliacus and the psoas major muscle and they form the iliopsoas tendon. The iliopsoas tendon is attached to the lesser trochanter of the femur. You can see part of the femur on the other side, and that is the head of the femur. And of course, the lesser trochanter is located below, a little bit below the head of the femur. Of the other structures that you can see in this section, and that is on the right side, you can see the cecum. This is the region of the cecum and the ileocecal junction, where the ileum opens into the cecum. On the, right, on the left side, you can see the part of the large intestine here, which is the descending colon. On the side of the descending colon is the left paracolic gutter of the peritoneal cavity. Above the liver, the space, which is part of the peritoneal cavity, that is located between the liver and the right dome of the diaphragm is called the right subphrenic space. The right subphrenic space. A similar space is present on the left side, that is between the liver, the fundus of the stomach on one side, and the left dome of the diaphragm on the other side. And that is the left subphrenic space. So these are the two subphrenic spaces, the right subphrenic space and the left subphrenic space.